Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Kelsey Dahlia. Um, so first of all, can you just take me through your last few weeks, kind of how, you know, all the COVID-19 craziness has affected you personally? Well, yeah, it has been a roller coaster, quite the adventure. So right from getting back from um, the Des Moines Pro Swim, uh -huh. um, I started to feel like getting cold, uh, which I was, thought I had dodged all this year. Yeah. Uh, went to the doctor and they decided, because it went right to my lungs um, and with my asthma, they were like, let's just go ahead and test you. So they did test me. She said it would take three days and I thought, okay, I can wait three days. And I had to quarantine myself during that time. Okay. So I thought, okay, well, even, um, even if like it's fine, I can, I could still use the three days like rest, not swimming at this point, nothing had started to get canceled yet. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, three days out of the water is fine. Um, but it took a week to get my results back and I had to stay quarantined the whole time. Thankfully I was okay. I, yeah. and I didn't, I didn't expect to have a positive result cause I wasn't showing any symptoms, but yeah. that whole week the pool was open. And then the day I got my test back, the pool was closed down. So, uh, it's been since March 12th that I've been able to practice. Oh uh, so I've been just trying to wow. just be as consistent as I can taking it day by day more than ever. We actually um, reached out to a CrossFit gym and rented a bunch of gym equipment. Mm -hmm. So I was able to maintain my lifts and get a stationary bike. But just trying to be as creative as I can and mix things up every day, really taking it one day at a time. No, no kidding. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've talked to, to, to a lot of different swimmers and they've kind of had various levels of, oh, I, I was able to swim here or there, here or there, but I don't think anyone has just not swum since March 12th that I've talked to anyway. Which yeah, is, it's a long time in sw <laughs> the long world time. of swimming. Yeah. Yeah, we're April 1st right now. It's not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> that, yeah. So, so um, you told me you're, are you in Louisville right now or New Jersey? So this week I decided to drive and visit my family in New Jersey. Figured driving was the safest way. So I yeah. packed up my car, lots of hand sanitizer for any stops that I took. Yeah. And my family had been quarantined. So, and I had been quarantined. So I knew that there wasn't any exposure and I knew it was going to be okay. Um, so yeah, and now I'm doing workouts with my siblings here. And so it's good to mix it up here too. Yeah, definitely. So, um, when you were back in Louisville, so prior to this week, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. were you able to train with, uh, you know, your post-grad group, um, were you guys lifting together? What, what kind of stuff were you doing aside from the lifting? We kind of each just stayed in our homes and I know a few of us have been, um, going back and forth and I offered to our group to come over and lift but some of us most of us were able to get equipment uh, from the pool before they closed the doors to borrow that equipment um, just for however long this is going so I think everyone has at least something to work out with but I think we all wanted to still follow the social distancing guidelines too yeah. and just be extra careful but we did go frisbee golfing uh, with a couple other guys before the parks closed down. <laughs> nice. Um, that's funny that you say that. I actually just talked to Caleb Dressel, who said there's a frisbee golf course in his backyard, and he's picked that up a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, my husband went a couple days after we went, and I guess the parks took removed some of the goals. <laughs> uh -huh. So they tried to prevent people from coming back, but I don't think they took all of them down. But they just wanted to discourage people after the first couple holes and then they just send them home. <laughs> nice. Um, wow. Well, I guess don't Frisbee golf then. Um, so what, so since you've been home, um, what have you, how have you spent time with your family aside from working out? Mm -hmm. Well, we have been playing a tournament of Mexican train. Uh, every night we play a few rounds and tally up our scores and uh, they ha they had a game going last week but we started over uh, when okay. I came here so <laughs> they took out the batteries though I don't know if you know Mexican train like you're supposed to hit 
the middle tile and it's super obnoxious like jingle and so they did take out the batteries but um, <laughs> it's fun as we have seven of us playing and we almost fill up the whole whole board so it's fun yeah and so is your whole family is back in New Jersey yeah so my sister was in getting her master's at University of Tennessee mm -hmm. and she came up and then my brother is a sophomore at Louisville and he came up and they were both on uh, trips for spring break and then instead of going back to their schools they went to New Jersey so it's yeah. it's good we don't normally get this extended time and even at Christmas this year we had a really short time mm -hmm. it's all together because of Vegas and training trip and everything so yeah uh, it's, good, it's good to get this extra time together that's really great so um how is uh, obviously you're not swimming but how do you feel your day-to-day -day has has changed um I guess just in terms of if you know you, you're used to this structure in the schedule and how have you reacted to just that kind of being magically mm -hmm. moved away yeah it, it's weird not to have this structure and I try to do certain things each day consistently like I've been trying to still be consistent with my bedtime and I don't wake up quite as early but still yeah. like setting an alarm and probably waking up uh, 7 30 to 8 o'clock each day to get my day going with coffee breakfast and walk with my dog every day mm -hmm. and then um I try to, I've been trying to read a lot more, mm -hmm. so I spend my mornings reading and then start my workout. <clears throat> I'm definitely not working out quite as much as when we swim. It's hard to fill 20 hours a week of training when you don't have the pool and everything else I feel like takes much more of a toll on your body than swimming uh -huh. does. Uh, the water is just a little kinder, I think, than concrete, but um yeah, it's just trying to find that groove now that I'm home it should be a little bit better helping my siblings with their homework because I don't even have school now like some of like, yeah. my college kids do. So um, that's what I'm trying to read. I have found my French book because my husband is French and I did vow in, at our wedding to learn French <laughs> and I haven't really done a great job with that at all. So I figured with this extra time, I should take care of learning French. So pick that up again just briefly and um, there's been some zoom calls as well just trying to stay connected with my church group um, we have calls once a week and the swimmers just trying to stay connected and encourage each other get different ideas okay what what, have you, what are you doing that's been working okay well maybe i'll try that i did try caleb's uh ab video that he yeah. shared and it was a burner i <laughs> probably keep doing that it was good Oh, hey, this is Lotus. Hey, Lotus. <laughs> um, well, that's awesome. Uh, so, what are you reading? I've been. Have you have you been watching anything either? Uh, we watch. We finished the second uh, series of Formula One, second okay. season of Formula One, on Netflix, and that was really good. I really didn't know anything about Formula One drivers, so really interesting is it, seeing like the focus that they have is that a documentary series kind of it just kind of follows the different drivers from last season okay so it's cool because it's like recent and um you can see the drivers that are still racing now and get to know them a little bit behind the scenes yeah they're such different athletes like their focus isn't like so much their body but just controlling the car and uh, I have a lot of respect for them now, I guess. Yeah. Um, my family's been watching Tiger King like everyone else. Yeah. So, like, it's not appropriate for my 10 year old sister, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, dabbling with that, mm -hmm. I found uh, six of the seven Chronicles of Narnia books oh, at my okay. parents' bookshelf. So, it's from like the 1950s. Okay. And I actually. So I tried to read them before. I might have finished them. I don't remember, but I had written it Kelsey World, age eight, in the books. <laughs> so it's been a while since I picked them up. Wow. D I mean, does that frustrate you to no end that you found six of them? It is. I'm missing the first one. Oh no. 
<laughs> but it's a line that was in the wardrobe and that's the one that oh, okay. can pretty much yeah. that everyone pretty much knows right 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 okay cool um oh that's awesome so have you added anything into your routine um that you feel will kind of be applicable to your swimming maybe later down the road um maybe and not so much like you know not physically but maybe more mentally mm. i think the one day at a time aspect just uh is something i'm really going to take with me and then when i have a lot more gratitude for swimming this year is really tough and i was really really enjoying training again when everything shut down so i think next year i'm going to enjoy training and uh, I don't know how much longer my career is going to be and uh, uh, but my goal was to make the team and now it's just moving that finish line a little bit farther so um, right now I'm just trying to uh, just use the most out of uh, the circumstances and and the things I have and what I can just do the most the best with what I can control like my sleep and I want to do better with my nutrition right now and learn how to cook a little bit better but now that we know that the stores are going to stay open and what that's going to look like now. So yeah. uh, I definitely want to get better with my nutrition. Did, has, has your nutrition changed like uh, out of necessity throughout this process just because like you're unable to get certain things or you can only go to the store once a week or maybe, you know, your favorite restaurant is closed now, mm -hmm. um, anything like that? Yeah. Uh, it hasn't changed too much in the beginning. I thought that we needed to buy all these like canned things. I was just going to have to do rice and beans and like, canned right. green beans right. or something. Same. But we, we're still able to get like our meal uh, meal kits delivered every week and mm -hmm. go to Costco. So far in Kentucky, it hasn't been that insane at the stores, which I'm grateful for. Um, but wow. uh, just trying to still t stay, take our distance, stay distant in the stores and be safe. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So did you, um, did you have an initial reaction to the Olympic postponement? Is that something you had seen coming? Is that something you were hoping for? Uh, based on my circumstances and then how everyone's circumstances became, we can't find pools. There's nowhere to train. I'm really grateful for the postponement. I think based on, how the virus has spread and how it's quickly getting from person to person and healthy people like we didn't think at the beginning. I think that it's definitely for the best safety for the swimmers, all athletes and for the world in general. So I had a, a better reaction than I thought I would. I didn't even really cry, which I was surprised. Uh, but I think I'm still processing. I think everyone is what these implications are looking like. And the hardest part of all this is not knowing when we'll be able to swim again, how long this will last. Everyone in different positions of leadership are predicting different things, but no one really knows until we get there. So I think that's just been the toughest part for me, but overall I'm grateful for the postponement and mostly grateful it's not a cancellation. That would have been so much harder for everyone involved if that was the decision. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah no kidding. Um, so on a, related note um you know that that might change people's goals but you know like you said it's much more of a day-to-day -day process currently um has this kind of changed how you approach your day-to-day -day goals at all mm -hmm. well i kind of has changed because i feel like i'm kind of coaching myself right now mm -hmm. i have my strength coach jason who i'm still working with and mm -hmm. kept keeping in touch with or some coaches too, but they're not at my house and they're not watching yeah. over me to tell me what to do. You know, I can get those workouts, but it's up to me to do them. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's how it's changed. It's, I have a little bit, a lot more freedom in what each day looks like. And so um, that brings in the cre creativity with each thing. So um, it's, it's fun too. That I have the support. I'm grateful that I have my husband with me and um, he, is, is active too so he does his crossfit workouts and i do my my workouts too and then here being with my brother and sister doing our the workouts together uh, makes it a lot more fun it makes me really grateful for team yeah 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, cool. Any, any closing thoughts you've got? Oh, I forgot to mention one other thing yes. um, that I've been doing. Um, so uh, we have a virtual reality headset. And so one of my new ways to mix in cardio is this game called Beat Saber. So uh -huh. it's a kind of a, a combination of Fruit Ninja and like Tap Tap Revenge on your phone. So it's okay. these two music notes that are coming at you and you have to slice them with the wands. Uh -huh. And I can do expert now, not to brag, but um, <laughs> it is really does like my, my Apple Watch will say, uh, notify me and say, it looks like you're going on a run. Do you want to record this workout? So <laughs> it really does uh, get your heart, heart rate up. And it's been a lot of fun uh, to mix in a little bit of extra cardio, I guess. That's and awesome. then it, it's a comp competitive too, because my husband is better than me, but every once in a while I'll beat his score. And then the next, his next try, he'll break, break it again. But that's <laughs> definitely filled some <laughs> empty time. <laughs> that's great. But so like every time you break the note, does it like make, does it like make a song as the final product? It doesn't, but it, it like makes your wand vibrate. Oh. So it's really satisfying and <clears throat> it's tricky because every once in a while, like the right hand color will be on the left hand side and uh, it, okay. it's tough it's tough um, yeah there was a really 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 hard video that went around twitter last week and i could not pass that that's for sure but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there maybe one day maybe one day you've got a lot of time to practice i do <laughs> do you have so you know now that you certainly have more free time is there anything you want to accomplish with that chunk of time mm. Probably like the learning of French will be good. I could pick up knitting again. Um, I, I do like to knit. I knit my sister a scarf for Christmas and I learned a new stitch in the process. I'm not a professional by far, but I could get better at knitting. <laughs> um, but I've also enjoyed just catching up with friends, family, calling my grandparents every week. Thankfully, they're doing well in Florida. Um, but that's been uh, one of the positives is uh, getting to stay in touch with old friends and family definitely mm -hmm. well nice uh so, so i'll ask again any any closing thoughts you've got i think that's it yeah cool well thanks a lot for your time kelsey you're welcome good catching up with you